Hey, it's Brett, Useful Aircraft. I left the house today. I'm 3,000 miles away from home right now. I'll be gone for the next couple of days, but hopefully get back to the shop and get building something soon. I've seen a recurring question in the comment section on the videos, and I wanted something that I, maybe I should address, and it's with regards to the KFM steps. I got into building KFM wings because I started with traditional wings. If you guys can think back a thousand years ago, the very first airplane that I was building up was an old Wanderer glider. It was one of those, I don't know, it was probably close to almost a six foot wingspan. We unrolled the plans, laid them out on the workbench, and pinned the uh, balsa parts to the plans, a little bit of crazy glue here and there, put it all together. I actually think we were just using Elmer's back then, or I don't know, I forget what it was. Um, built a big beautiful airplane and then promptly crashed it into a million pieces. That was what felt like a thousand man, man hours dead and gone within the hour. It was a bit of a letdown to say the least. So got out of you know model aviation, got into you know full scale aviation, flying airplanes for a living, um, and was pretty busy with that. Uh, you know had something. Uh, I got sidelined with a uh, with a heart issue for a little while, and uh, just prior to COVID, so I rolled into a whole lot of free time. Um, and you know I had already started back into model aviation. I had always played around with uh, you know model cars, and I don't know I did quadcopters and everything else. Um, still got quadcopters. Matter of fact, I got a pretty interesting uh, hexacopter I'm working on right now. And uh, anyway, um, started you know getting into flying fixed wing stuff. FPV really had my attention. It was something I wanted to be a part of. So the first couple airplanes that I built, I, I did. I, I built up full wings. Um, you know, I, I, I was working primarily with foam board. I had the laser at that time. I had the laser. I looked it up the other day. I had a little over ten years now. Um, so that put the laser purchase probably around the 2014 time frame. Um, so I could turn out uh, consistent foam board cut parts and I started building full up flying wings. I mean they were wings modeled after you know conventional airfoils that I looked at you know and included taper and washout and you know uh, the airplanes I built with fuselage you know I had you know complicated wing fillets you know where they would interface with a fuselage in order to reduce you know parasitic drag I went down the rabbit hole, built all that stuff. Same thing, crashed living daylights at them. So, you know, I got into it that I, I honestly, in the in the RC world, I wasn't as good at flying them as I needed, and I needed to iterate faster. Buying kits wasn't wasn't going to work. I bought a couple of them. Um, I bought some ready to flies. I bought a couple of those. Hell, you just go out to the field and it'd be two hundred bucks a pop every time I threw it out there. So, you know, it, that just wasn't something that was going to be sustainable. Um, I, I had harvested those parts and, and was convinced I could build them into foam board airplanes. So, you know, I knew about what are essential, essentially, you know, flat plane airfoils. Um, look at the old, uh, I don't know, the T thirty eight. Look at the, uh, you know, F one hundred four. Look at any of those, uh, now these are supersonic airplanes, sure, and supersonic aerodynamics are a very different thing. I mean, look at the old Deltas, the Concorde, and everything else. Um, you know, there's there's really not much of a camber line to these things. You're not talking about airfoils with deep cords and all that, and yet they still manage to stay aloft. And the way that they do it, you know, has a lot more to do with angle of attack. It's Newtonian flying. It's brute force of forcing air down, and the airplane goes up. Um, compared to, you know, the whole thought behind Bernoulli and Lyft and these, you know, beautiful organically sculpted shapes and the idea of equal time airflow, which, I don't know, still don't necessarily buy it. There's some magic to that. It, it works because it works, and I'm not going to get into it. I'm not that smart of a guy. So I started trying to figure out what the easiest things to build were. Um, I did play with some flat panel, just foam board wings. Um, and you can make a sheet of foam board fly. You can just you can make any flat piece of paper fly essentially. I mean, you put a motor, you get the center of gravity right, put the appropriate you know control surfaces on, hold that angle of attack, um, the airplane will generate lift. You know, given sufficient power, and it worked. Um, so I was making you know foam board airplanes. Obviously, a single layer wasn't working out, so I doubled it up, two layers, and then I had the idea, let's bury some popsicle sticks in there. So I you know I ended up on a essentially a KFM stepped airfoil, and I did look it up. I you know I read the forums and you know, saw these things and said, hell, let's give it a try. So the earliest versions of the Drag Queen, and I'll try and put some photos of this on the screen and show you, they actually were a conventional stacked KFM aerofoil. I forget where I had the step, but I mean, I did all the research on it. Um, and the step was on the upper surface, just as God intended and everything else. Um, and I loved it. I thought they were great. But what I noticed is that they flew brilliantly. They were loads of fun. They're not swoopy gliders. They don't sit there and and hover around and ground effect at you know walking speeds or anything like that. These are airplanes that need to go. They need to maintain a certain amount of wing loading in order to fly. But if you maintain that forward airspeed, they're going to do great. But what I noticed with them was that they flew great inverted as well. And 
inverting it gave me some ideas, you know, because I was using that upper surface. I was using that second surface that was stacked on top, and especially like with the drag queens. If you notice in some of those, and I'll try and find some pictures, put them on the screen, I would sweep the portions that interfaced with the two rudders on the airplane that support the elevator. I would sweep the upper KFM step back, and so I would get better adhesion and stabilize the tail more. It would add some structure to it. I, I was hunting to find structure. This is before I, you know, I don't know, stuck a popsicle stick factory back there and just, you know, spruced it all up, so to speak. But what I realized eventually was that, yeah, the airplane still flew well pretty much regardless what you were doing in that, uh, to that upper step. And at the same time, the airplane flew well inverted. And I thought about it because the underside of the wing honestly looked better. And this is a stupid deal, but it boils halfway down to aesthetics, but there were some engineering advantages to what I was doing. I flipped it one day. I said, the hell with it, let's just do it. I built the airplane and I flipped the wing upside down. And why I did it at first, it made it real easy to hide servo wires. I could take my servo wires and run them along the trailing edge of that KFM step then and tuck them into the fuselage and you didn't have them hanging out. I didn't have to cut giant slots into the wings. It gave a natural place for that stack step to exist. You know, and I flew along fat, dumb, and happy with that. I had some buried popsicle sticks in the wings. Um, you know, and that's something I still do, especially along the fold lines. They're great at absorbing stress. Um, you have to pay particular attention where the ends of the popsicle sticks come into the wing. You don't want to have you know, two wings like that, because then you'll have a, a, a line, a path for stress to develop, and the airplane will simply fold along that line. What instead you want to have is you want to stack them, you want to overlap them, so that, that stress path would have to be curved, and that's just not going to happen. And I mean, again, these are not heavily loaded airframes. They're, they're things that we're out yanking and banking at the park, and, you know, we're doing combat stuff, and if somebody knocks you out of the sky, you giggle and grin, and you go back to the shop, and you build another one the next day, and you go back out and knock his ass out of the sky. So that's what these airplanes are for. But I still wanted to find some additional strength. A, a hybrid model between, I would say, my version one, which was the early KFM aerofoils that were in the conventional way, top stepped, and where I went to, where I inverted it in version one and a half, was, you know, a hybrid style where I said, I want a leading edge that's nicer. What that became was a 3D printed leaning edge. And I made a beautiful swept, I mean, it, it just looked like the, the front end of a I don't know, what would that be? I mean, it was almost like a, you know, leading edge on an on a Airbus or something like that. Um, and it was, it was nice and it, it had great taper and it came down to a nice point and you could, you could, you could incorporate all sorts of things aerodynamically to it. But it pressed on to the leading edge and I loved that. And it also gave this, uh, some rigidity to the wing. Eventually what I realized, I was looking at, you know, I read a lot of weird stuff and I go into you know, down rabbit holes, and I thought about it. I was thinking about like old TriMaster, uh, 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 the, the old uh, Ford TriMotors and the airplanes that Fokker used to build out of corrugated metal. And what did they do? With the corrugations gave that airframe strength. And I thought, what if we applied the same thing to the wing? And that's when I came with the bent leading edge providing my KFM airfoil, which is now on the underside. The KFM step was now on the underfoil, underside of the airfoil. But as opposed to just stacking the paper, I made it into a single sheet wing. So you folded it over and in folding the foam board and compressing the foam board into that leading edge, it was better than any spar. It was giving the airplane surprising rigidity for what it was. And again, I'm trying to minimize my parts count. I don't want to be embedding carbon fiber stuff. I don't want to be embedding, um, you know, other materials in there. And, and so it really worked. And so basically that's the evolution. That's how I got where I am. I learned that a folded leading edge gave me strength. The KFM step being on the underside of the wing gave me a place to tuck my wires and the airplane flew great. And I honestly think it looks better. So that's the answer to how we got to where we are today. The folded uh, leading edge on my inverted KFM wings. Go out and try it. I'm not solving for every unit of efficiency. I'm not conserving every milliamp hour. The airplane flies great. It's easy to build. It's loads of fun. You can go out and do silly things with them. You can build it in an afternoon and teach kids. And, and you have a hoop, you know? If you're into building the airplanes that, that go the other way in the man hours and build time, so be it. Good on you, glad that's out there. I love them at the field, I think they're amazing, but I'll be the guy out there flying. Anyway, that's it from the road. I'll talk to you next time from the shop. All the best.